Hi everybody, welcome back to another video on Feynman integration. Um, not going to be doing Feynman integration today. Um, I thought this uh, result was too cool to pass up. Um, we are going to be solving a very difficult integral. Um, that integral is this right here. It's integral from negative infinity to infinity of negative x squared minus 1 over x squared dx. Um, and we're going to be using uh, two tools today to solve that, this tool and this tool. Uh, the main focus of this video will be proving this result right here. Um, but I'll just briefly go over this result right here. This is just um, splitting a function up into its odd and even components. Um, like this, you, if you have a function f of x, it will be equal to f of x minus f of negative x over 2, which is an odd function because if you plug in x, if you plug, if you, uh, if you plug in negative x for x, you will get f of negative x minus f of x, which is exactly the negative of this thing right here. So that's an odd function. Then you'll also have the even part, which is f of x plus f of negative x over 2. And that's even because if you plug in negative x, you just get the same thing back. And it's, it's easy to see that this is true. You have 2 times f of x over 2. You have one right here, f of x over 2 plus f of x over 2, which is simply f of x. And then minus f of negative x plus f of negative x all over 2. They cancel each other out, so you're just left with f of x. So like I said, it's pretty easy to see why that's true. Um, Trivial, but very powerful, and we will be using that to, uh, to solve that. Um, the next one is kind of, it's more obscure. Um, and I had a lot of trouble with uh, the proofs that were given online. If you, I, I don't believe you'll find this particular demonstration of why this is true online. I researched it pretty heavily. Um, and I was not able to find a proof, or not a proof, because it's, it's not a rigorous proof. It's more of a, a, it's a demonstration of why it's true. Um, and I wasn't able to find one that I was able to understand fully. Um, a lot of them use complex analysis and um, the things that I'm not really good at or familiar with at all. Um, but anyway, th this gets the job done. So anyway, what we're, we're trying to prove is that the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of x dx is equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of x minus 1 over x dx. Um, and that's going to be the main part of this video. So the first step is um, to show uh, that the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of x dx is just equal to to this right here, the integral from 0 to infinity of f of x plus f of negative x dx. And we start by using uh, this property right here. Then we break it up into its odd and even parts like this. Um, you see I'm basically just copying, copy and pasting this result right into this integral right there. Um, this part is the odd part um, and it cancels out because we're over a symmetric interval of that integral right there. Um, the integral from negative a to a of uh, any odd function will evaluate to zero. Um, so we're just left with the even part of that function right here. And since that is an even uh, function, we can use um, the fact that the integral from, a, from negative a to a of an even function is simply equal to um, one half of the integral from zero, I'm, I'm sorry, it's equal to twice the integral um, from zero to infinity of that same function. So, so that's how we get this. This is from zero to infinity. Um, well, I'm sorry, this is one half of this, but then uh, when, we, when we change the bounds from zero to infinity, we'll have to double it um, to, to make up for the fact that we're not getting uh, negative infinity to zero. Um, so in any, in any case, I'm not sure, I kind of jumbled my words a little bit, but that's true um, using the properties of even functions. Uh, so the next step is we're just going to create a new, a new variable j, and we're just going to set it equal 
to this thing right here. Clean integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of x minus 1 over x dx. Um, and then we're going to use this result in step 1 to uh, just show that it's equal to this. It's equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of f of x, which is just our original thing right there, but from 0 to infinity, plus 0 to infinity of f of negative x. So we're just going step by step. We're just using um, the result we got in the last step in this step to show this. Next, um, we will be uh, doing a u substitution. Um, our substitution, um, you know, it should be no um, mystery why I chose this substitution. Um, but anyway, the substitution is that u is equal to x minus 1 over x. Um, and then um, solving for x, um, we get that x, and you have to use the quadratic formula on this to, to solve for x. Um, not that difficult, I'm sure all of you can do it. But anyway, uh, the, what you get is that x is equal to u over 2 plus or minus the square root of u squared plus 4 over 2. Um, and we're only going to be using the positive result of that because we're only interested in positive value, or at least non-negative values. Um, and the positive version of this uh, will be what we... So this is always smaller than this. Pretty easy to see that. u over 2 is always going to be smaller than the square root of u squared plus 4 over 2. Um, that's, that's pretty easy to see. I'm not going to do any sort of proof on that. Um, so if we use the negative version, we would end up with a negative value of x, and we don't want a negative value of x. So that's why we're only interested in the positive result. Um, anyway, that will give us that dx is equal to 1 half plus u over the square root of u squared plus 4 du, and I'm not going to do the work on that. That's, that's just some trivial um, differentiation. Um, but anyway, let's, uh, let's go ahead and put that in to our last step. So if we use our substitution, our bounds of integration will change back to what we want them to be, negative infinity to infinity. And that's pretty, um, you know, it's, it's easy to see. Um, so right here, we have um, our bounds of integration 0 to infinity. So if we let x equal 0, we will get 0 minus 1 over 0. And of course, this is 0 approach. This is positive 0. Okay, this is approaching from the top. Um, so it's a positive 0. So we have x minus 1 over some positive value that is approaching 0, which will give us negative infinity. So you get negative infinity if x is 0. Um, if x is infinity, you get infinity minus 1 over something approaching infinity, which is just 0, and you get infinity. So that's why our bounds of integration change back to what we want, negative infinity to infinity. Um, and then we just plug in our substitution. Uh, this f of x minus 1 over x just becomes f of x. I'm sorry, f of u. Um, and our dx becomes this. And it, the same with this, same with this part right here. We'll just get an f of a negative u times dx. And because you can see this is negative u right there. So we get negative infinity to infinity f of negative u times the same dx, which is you know, that. Um, next step. Um, actually, what did I do in the next step? Oh, yeah. Okay, so what I did basically in the next step is I just I just switched u with negative u. Uh, basically, it's it would you should use another variable going uh, from that step. Um, you know, in that step, I didn't. I just I just did it directly. Um, you should do something like w is equal to negative u. Um, but anyway, what you get if you bring u to negative u is this right here. The only thing that will change is this plus sign will turn to a negative, and I'll leave it to you to, to verify that. Um, I, I apparently am having a little trouble speaking today.
today. You know, I want to try to be as little of it as possible. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's what you get in the next step. You just, you get, this part is untouched, and this part just changes to almost exactly the same thing, except you have a negative view over that. And the next step, um, it, it's just basically adding those integrals together. You'll have the integral from negative infinity to infinity of one half f of u plus the integral from negative infinity to infinity of another one half of f of u, which is just f of u. Um, and then you'll get plus this times this and then minus this times this. So they cancel out. So we're just finally left with j being equal to the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of u du, which we started with uh, with this. So there you go. That's uh, that's my way of proving that identity right there. And like I said, I haven't seen it proved that way um, anywhere else on the internet. Um, that is that's original as far as I know. That's original. Um, anyway, I'm pretty proud of that. So uh, let's get to solving this integral right here using those two things that we. Well, you'll see that you can rewrite this exactly like this. Um, because you'll notice, let's, let's just do the algebra here. We have e to the negative something. That something is x minus 1 over x squared. So let's, let's, let's do that. What's x minus 1 over x squared? That's x squared minus this times this which is 1, and then minus this times this again, which is another negative 1, then plus 1 over x squared. So we end up with e to the negative x squared minus 2 plus 1 over x squared. Um, that minus 2 will become a positive 2 when you apply that negative sign to it, which will cancel with that, so you can see that these two things are the same. And that's where we use this fact right here. All we have is, um, you can see that right here we have x minus 1 over x, so we can literally, lit literally just replace it with an x, because we've already shown that these two things are equivalent. So that's what we do in the next step. We have i, is equal, i being equal to 1 over e squared times the integral from negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared dx. And I've done this one on the channel already, and even if I hadn't, that's a fairly common, uh, that, 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 that's a famous result. It's equal to the square root of pi. Um, so anyway, yeah, the entire integral evaluates to the square root of pi over e squared. And that's it. Um, I promise next video will actually be on Feynman integration, like the channel says it should be. But uh, anyway, I thought that was that was too cool to pass up, so um, I wanted to show you guys that. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that.